it was number three, Chrysler, that took the biggest wallop. I would like to introduce the chairman of the board, Lee Iacocca. When Lee Iacocca came to Chrysler in 1978, he found that the uh, Chrysler organization was in, was in big trouble. And uh, not only because of the position of the marketplace, but because of past sins. Chrysler had cut the R&D development areas and also cut engineering to maintain a profitability. The next problem he found was that they would build more cars than they had orders for. In fact, it was not uncommon for them to have something like 100, 150,000 cars sitting somewhere in Detroit waiting to be shipped. There seemed to be the mindset that Chrysler was going to go broke, that they weren't going to make it. So he, when he walked in in 78, uh, he said it was a big mess, and he, he was right. It was a big mess. My excuse for coming to you is real simple. I'm running out of money, and I'm going to have to shut down. In his effort to save Chrysler, Iacocca turned to the federal government for help in what would become known as the Chrysler bailout. The government wanted to save Chrysler for a couple reasons. And Jimmy Carter in 1979 is running for re-election. Carter could not afford to let one of the largest automobile manufacturers go out of business and then lose all those union jobs and still get the Democratic nomination. The other thing is I think it was an idea of um, uh, just a, a symbol. You know, in 1979, uh, the country was doubting itself whether we really were the best in the world. If Chrysler had gone out of business, I think that just would have thrown more a negative stigma into the American public's uh, psyche that uh, maybe we weren't the best. The government aid to Chrysler came in the form of loan guarantees. The overall package was a, uh, was a loan guarantee from the government for, I think, $1.5 billion. And then there were some, a series of concessions given by suppliers, by uh, union people, by um, uh, state and local governments. Uh, the union had to give back, I think it was $2 an hour to Chrysler, plus take some freezes, plus allow some changes in work rules, and allowed Chrysler the ability to close some plants. The UAW was willing to agree to these terms because I really had no other options. The reduced wages agreed to by the United Auto Workers lowered Chrysler's production costs. This contributed to an increase in short-run aggregate supply. Aggregate demand was increased by two factors, the $1.2 billion in government-backed loans and the stabilizing effects of saving 150,000 jobs. Both shifts started moving the economy back toward full employment equilibrium. Chrysler uh, got back on its feet through a couple of different things. First of all, one, Iacocca had taken the workforce from 40,000 in 1979 to about 22,000 in 1983. Reagan's tax cut certainly uh, helped stimulate demand during that period of time. And the, uh, basically the pent-up of, uh, of, of demand for automobiles. If you buy any car without considering Chrysler... And they'd done a very nice job of marketing their product. I think the spring of 1983 was their first um, was their first uh, uh, profitable quarter since 1979. And I think they made like 140 million or 150 million dollars. And then from then on, it was uh, pretty much all, it was pretty much straight up for them. Uh, the union wages with Ford and General Motors and Chrysler came back into a parity in the uh, late 80s. The government's intervention helped Chrysler to recover and retain its place as one of the big three U.S. automobile companies. In 1999, Chrysler merged with the German auto manufacturer Daimler to become an even bigger player in the global marketplace. Given this successful outcome, was the Chrysler bailout the right thing to do? I would argue that the federal government should not have done this. If we are going to allow uh, families, in particular women, uh, young women with young children, to be subject to the forces of the market, then it's hard for me to justify why a multi-billion dollar corporation should in effect receive uh, federal government assistance and why that corporation shouldn't similarly be subject to the forces of the market. The bailout say the stockholders of Chrysler. That's not an appropriate government policy to go around saving stockholders. We either get a billion or in about 12 months you got 2.7 billion to take care of these people. In what? not see the training, you won't train them fast enough. It's in welfare payments. Chrysler came to the government as a private corporation, a profit-making corporation, and said that we need your um, unprecedented help 
don't let us fail because the economy will go down with it. In terms of economic rationale, you don't want to encourage bailouts you know, throughout the economy. What if several other companies uh, took cue from that and thought that um, they could be uh, careless or not quite as responsible in their affairs? But I'm not sure that there is uh, evidence of any long-term serious problem that was caused in the economy. Basically, it is still not a very good idea for the government to uh, create an environment where there are discussions in the, in the marketplace or in the economy. Competition's competition, and I like competition. And the more competition there is in the automobile business, the better it is for all the consumers.